Well, can you tell us how does Clearview work? Well, quite simply, Clearview is basically a search engine uh, for faces. So anyone in law enforcement can upload a face to the system and it finds any other publicly available material that matches that particular face. Can you just tell us how, how did you build this? How, how long did it take? How many people were involved? Is, is this a hard thing to build? Uh, yeah, it is a quite a hard thing to build. So we spent you know, about two years really perfecting the technology and the accuracy and the raw facial recognition technology. Um, so, you know, we have to search out of billions and billions of photos and still provide an accurate match and not have any false positives. So that was the first initial technical breakthrough. And then the second part of it was, what's the best application of this technology? And we found that law enforcement was such a great use case to help solve crimes. So how many law enforcement agencies, um, intelligence agencies are using this tool at the moment? Yeah, it's over 600 now and uh, the response has been fantastic. So. Are they all 600 paying customers? No, not all of them are paying. What we do is we give uh, a police agency or um, a federal agency a, a free trial, you know, uh, maybe 30 to 60 days. And during their usage, these investigators solve a lot of cases, and we work with them and figure out how they can go through and procure right. the product. So how many paying law enforcement at the moment? Well, we don't disclose that. Okay. But, um, but you, they're all very happy customers, put it that way. Do you have any private clients? Uh, we have a few, just in the banking sector. But all our um, customers are people who are trained investigators. So, for example, uh, someone who does anti-fraud at a bank. So there might be, you know, someone who's had their identity stolen, all their money taken out of their account because someone impersonated their identity, and they're able to use the tool to find you know, a lead to someone who was the real person uh, taking the money out of the account. We spoke to the Attorney General in New Jersey yesterday mm -hmm. and we we're talking a little bit about a, I guess, a successful use case of Clearview mm -hmm. uh, to involve in a, in a case of um, an, an arrest of a suspected child predator. Mm -hmm. Can you talk us a little through how the technology was used in, in that case? Great. So I can talk about how it's used in general for uh, finding uh, child predators. So there was a um, person sending selfies to a 12-year-old girl online, but it was an undercover cop. And what, with Clearview, they were able to find his real identity. With previous systems, they could, you know, run their face through their existing facial rec, but they wouldn't find anything, mainly because of some inaccuracies, but also it's not a large data set. You only have people who've been arrested before. And these uh, child predators, they're totally different people. They come from all walks of life. And so with our tool, they were able to match him to an online profile. Um, he was a tax accountant. This is the very first case we ever helped with. And six days later, they were arrested. So that What's, would... What state was this in? Uh, that was in New York. And that was a case with NYPD? Yeah, I, I'm not going into the specifics of all the cases, but we've had, you know, thousands and thousands of cases like this. What, can you just talk us through, I, I know you touched on it, but talk us through what makes Clearview different to other facial recognition technology? Yeah, it's a great question. So typically, you know, there's been older technology that hasn't been as accurate, and they work on small data sets. So it might be your local police department mugshots. So it won't be across state lines. What Clearview has enabled them to do is, you know, someone may have been arrested in Florida, but go to a different state and start committing crimes. So we have a lot of mugshots from the open internet, um, and then news sites, and then professional uh, websites, and all kinds of information that's out there. So the, the, the vastness of the information is what makes it, you know, uh, the next generation of facial recognition. What are the, the limitations of your technology? You know, we really think, and we can give you the demonstration that we've, you know, really broken the sound barrier for facial recognition. So it's gotten to a point where we think it's better than the human eye and it works on different poses, different angles, all kinds of stuff like that. Of course, there's always room for improvement, but um, we're very excited to get to that level. We have billions and billions of photos and it's still very rare for a false positive to come up. And on top of that, when an investigator uses it to, to uh, get a lead on a case, they don't just make an arrest. That's one of the misconceptions that's out there. They um, have to verify extra information. Was that person at the same location? Do they have this matching tattoo? Or is the hair the same? All those kind of things before they uh, proceed with their case. Well, should we, should we see how good the technology is? Sure. We can can it identify your... this, this Irishman's face? <laughs> <laughs> so this is what a typical investigator would use on their laptop or desktop. It also comes with a mobile version. So this is the actual This is the actual this thing. Is the very simple, you know. 
Um, if you're a police officer, this mm -hmm. is what you're seeing when you sign up to Clearview. Yes, and what you would do is you'd find a photo from surveillance camera footage or from a screenshot or from wherever, and you would... And you're reminding the law enforcement to follow the law. Follow the law, of course. <laughs> And uh, like that says, they cannot be used as evidence in court, only use it for authorized purposes. So if you don't mind, uh, can I run your photo? Or I can do my own first. Let's, uh, well, yeah, let, let's go with you first. Let's okay. see. Um, I'm sure you've run your face through this before. It's true. But so. Oh, that's, nice. This is a nice pose. That's, uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate where, it. Where was this taken? Uh, in New Jersey at my aunt's place. Oh. And then you, as you can see, these are the links to the different photos online here. So this is the photo you uploaded? Yes. And this, so this is, here is the photo you uploaded, yes, correct? Yes, correct. But these um, are the other ones. There's some duplicates here, of course. Now, where is it pulling these images from? So these are all from different uh, websites online, Medium. Instagram. Is, these are all, you know, publicly available. What is it precisely doing? It's taking the distance between your eyes and your nose yes. and your mouth? How it's, does it work? Basically, it's similar to that, but we've trained this algorithm with a neural network on millions and millions of examples. That way it works with different poses, different lighting, different angles, with a beard, without a beard. And the mobile app I can show you, you can cover your face a little bit and it still comes up. And this took, this search took a millisecond, basically, a few, mm -hmm. a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. So you uploaded your photo. Mm -hmm. It scanned through 3 billion images. Yes. And it only took less than a second. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do me. What should I know before it goes into this system? Have you tried to, have you tried my face through this already? I think I have, yeah. Okay, interesting. So, let's, so let's you've done it. some research. Not really. I just see seeing if it works. So that's the photo of you. So this is a, f a photo of me from CNN.com. Okay. Right. So there, do you know that? So one? the first few. Let's let's go through this. So here's the photo you uploaded to me. Mm -hmm. um, a headshot from CNN. Mm -hmm. uh, so first few images it's found. It's found a few different versions of that that yes. same picture. Mm -hmm. It has found this one from a different angle, which is yeah. So the the most similar photos come up first. Okay, it's all based on similarity. But now as we scroll down, we're starting to see pictures of me that are not from that original mm -hmm. image. So this is so unlike like a reverse image search. This you know does different angles and variations. It's and even black just and white. Face. Exactly. Here's one of me in glasses. Even though the image of me you've uploaded, I'm not wearing glasses. This this found mm -hmm. me with glasses. Mm -hmm. Terrible photo of me here. Very good. This is oh wow. This is from Medium, mm -hmm. Contacte, which is a Russian social mm -hmm. media website, which I do have a profile on, unfortunately. Uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, mm -hmm. YouTube. YouTube photos terrible. Oh, go to Wow. Oh my God. Is that you? That or photo is, that... is me. Doesn't yes. look like you. That's when you were younger. Wow. <laughs> so it uh, works, right? Can you click into sure. So I don't really look anything like that right now. So you can compare the photos if you know you want to have a, you know. So this this photograph is from a, my local newspaper where I lived in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And this photo would have been taken when I'm when I was like 16. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so that's how powerful the tool is. And, you know, we've had cases talking about how it works on ages where people have run wanted, you know, the most wanted photos and been able to get leads. So it's pretty... Yeah, uh, so, I mean, like, take a look at these two images side by side. The one of me on the right is uh -huh. uh, from CNN where I have a beard, I put out some waist, and then on the left is me from... Uh, more than a decade ago, uh, f something like 15 years ago, I guess, uh, I look very different. Uh, I mean, th the, the shape of my face is very different, but this AI technology is looking at what it's looking the at. The unique features. So what it does is uh, technically you have maybe 10,000 examples of some person when they're, say, George Clooney, when he's older, when he's younger, with a beard, without a beard, different angles, with shadow, without shadow the computer learns that's the same person. Uh, and so it learns to ignore things a little bit like the beard and fe focus on the features that stay the same across uh, you know, different age and everything. So, you know, we're amazed it's a miracle this thing works. It's, we spent so much time on it and um, the results have been amazing in, for law enforcement and these use cases of helping solve some of the hardest crimes. So the one other case that um, is just fascinating is there was uh, 
a predator in the background of a child pornography video. And he was only there for two or three frames. They were able to take his face and they couldn't solve this case for you know, six or eight months, something like that. They took his face, they could run it. They found him working at a gym in the background of someone else's gym selfie in the mirror. Using Clearview. Using Clearview. And then Where they, was this? Can you tell us which? It's, it's in um, the Vegas area, I believe. And I don't want to comment too much on these cases, but they were able to get that lead, go down to the gym and ask the person who worked there, you know, uh, who was this person, and eventually, they uh, could apprehend him and they saved a seven-year-old girl. So it's a very powerful thing and, you know, used responsibly because it's so powerful, it can have so much uh, benefit to the world. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, the, the photo of me from when I was a kid is from a small local newspaper in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So you guys have really trawled the web here if you're getting... Yeah, most of our photos are from the open web. We have millions and millions of different websites. So you can do all this on a phone as well? Sure, yeah. So if you want to do another fun test? We are going to take a selfie of me mm -hmm. and run it through the system. So why don't you go there, mm -hmm. so take a look, and press the button like uh, the camera does. Mm -hmm. Oh, searching face already? Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so. You can uh, scroll through. So again. Pulling up photos of me. So you have a different lighting here? It's, so again, in a matter of seconds, just taking a mm -hmm. selfie of me, what if I cover my face? Yes, you like can try cover part cover, of my face. covering your mouth. Try covering okay. your mouth, and then I'll press the button for you. So less results will come up, but most likely it will be um, the same, a lot of the same links, yeah? So 17 oh results that God. time, not 31, but. Now, why is it that if my face is partially covered, it's still finding out? Because a lot of the features are related to the uniqueness of your face is still there, um, where, uh, whereby it still learns. So the way it's, unlike the older facial recognition, which is trying to measure di exact distances, mm. this is uh, finding the things that stay the same throughout your face. So it's pretty important. And I see you also have a feature there where you can alert someone um, mm -hmm. if, if their face shows up. Yeah, so if you're an investigator, we're still, uh, you know, adding millions of photos every day. And uh, you might not have a lead, but it will send you an email if you're an investigator saying, hey, there is another possible match for your, for your case. So what happens is there's, you know, thousands of crimes that haven't been solved, wanted photos, things like that. And uh, we're really helping law enforcement uh, crack these cases. So I'm not happy that I am the only guinea pig. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to ask my producer, Risha, to also run her face through this. Because mm -hmm. um, my face, I, you know, I have a lot of social media, I never get off the internet, so I know I'm out there a lot on the internet. So, uh, Risha? Sure. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Can we cut sure. this if this it doesn't is... work? <laughs> no, let's sure. give it this a go. This should work. Yeah, let's do it. Do you have much social media? She's, you're out there. But... I'm out there. Let's see. Never had a demo fail. Let's see. You've never had a demo fail? So far. Oh, God. So, so I have a question for you. Where are these coming from first? Wait, this is Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm private on Instagram. Let's see. Oh, that's someone, that's, else. that's someone else's Instagram. So, yeah, it's but only wait, publicly available. This one right here. Yeah, I'm that's, private. That's Twitter, that. though. That's a Twitter photo. Yeah, someone tweeted it out. I'm pretty private. Wow. That's wait, but that's mine too. That's, you were public for a while. We only. I take... was public at one point, and then I went private. So you know those can. So if I go public. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that's my Instagram too, and I'm private now, but I was public at one point. Wow. So what's also interesting is. Um, your system was able to pull up some faces later on that it says these are similar but not the same person. Yes. It pulled up no person that just looks like me. It, in the, in the res what I'm saying is in the results, mm -hmm. there were, were no false positives. Do you that's understand why people around. find this creepy? I can understand people having concerns around privacy. So the first part to remember, it's only publicly available information. So um, anything that's put out there in, in the public world, 
uh, is, is, is available too. It's what you use it for. We're not just making technology for its own sake. There has to be a vision, a purpose, and a reason uh, for this to exist. And the reason and the purpose we found is to really help law enforcement solve crime. So in this context, mm. it's very powerful, but it's very controlled, and there's audit logs. So if you are um, a head of a police department, you can see the searches that your officers are doing to make sure they're used properly for the right cases. Um, and there's a lot of um, controls in place to make sure that we maximize the upside and the value this provides to society and law enforcement and keeping uh, children safe and keeping our community safe and really making sure that it's not abused. And we haven't had anyone wrongfully arrested from facial recognition uh, using our tool or even wrongfully detained. So um, we think, you know, in practice, it's been so great. And a lot of the concerns we, we do take seriously, but so far they've been very, you know, hypothetical. Is everything you're doing legal? Yes, it is. So we've gone through uh, and have some of the best legal counsel from Paul Clement, who used to be the Solicitor General of the United States. He's done over 100 cases in front of the Supreme Court. And he did a study in, independently saying this is not, um, the way it's used is, you know, in compliance with the Fourth Amendment. All the information we get is publicly available, and we have a First Amendment right to have public information on the Internet. And you have to understand what it's also being used for. We're not just taking your information and selling ads with it or trying to get more so the, views. The, the, We're actually helping solve crimes with this. So, so your, your counsel is making the argument that there's a First Amendment right to information that is publicly on the Internet? Yes. And so if you take something like Google, Google, you know, crawls the Internet, collects all these web pages, and you search it with keyword terms. We're the same thing. We take all this information on public web pages but search it with the face. But you're a bit different in that, as you saw with Risha here, Mm -hmm. Once somebody makes an account private, mm -hmm. that gets delisted from Google, but not in your system. It stays. There's a Google always has a cache or something. A For web a while. page, yeah, it can be deleted. And so mm. we have a tool where you can, you know, submit a URL that is deleted, and it will be taken down as well. And we're complying with all the different privacy laws from around the world. So we do take it seriously. We want to make sure that the public knows how this is being used and they understand that there's some misinformation out there uh, saying it has personal data or your camera roll and it's not the case at all. So, so. just to be clear on, on the First Amendment argument, mm -hmm. um, so because essentially what Clearview is doing mm -hmm. is taking, as you say, public images yes. that are out there, yes. downloading them, mm -hmm. storing them in a database, mm -hmm. then essentially selling access to that database for profit. Mm -hmm. You think there's a First Amendment argument? Um, that's just very similar to what Google does. It, Google is downloading web pages and uh, selling it to the public so they can do search and find a lot of useful information on the Internet. So, um, yeah, we think we're compliant with a lot of the different laws from copyright law and fair use and, um, and so on. You say there's, there's a, you know, this, if these images are out there publicly, mm -hmm. you can search them, index them, download them. Yeah. Um, Twitter and now Google and YouTube disagree and they've sent you cease and desist orders, is that correct? Yes, they have and we have our legal counsel and uh, we're talking to them and they're handling it all appropriately. You think they're wrong? I believe so and if you look at a company like Google, it's you know pretty hypocritical for them to download the whole internet as well. And you know, YouTube also has a lot of issues with. But is Google um, downloading it in this the way you are? It's a, the way it works behind the scenes is exactly the same. They have a cached copy of every web page out there. So for them to so be, they don't catch everything forever, though. You know, they have copies of it. If it gets taken down, you know, it gets removed from their index. But it the, essentially the catch, is the, the same. The catch normally stays a few hours, a few days, weeks it, at no, most, right? Yeah, it, take, it can stay there for a long time. But yours are staying indefinitely until somebody asks to remove it. Yeah, we we you know. What we have is a really powerful tool for law enforcement. So they need all the leads they can get uh, to, to help solve crimes. So when you take something, again, like Google, downloading a lot of images, a lot of websites. I mean, I, you know, I think a lot of this stuff, even your First Amendment argument, hasn't really been tested. I know, well, it, actually I know it has been tested. You have cases like LinkedIn versus Haiku in the well, Ninth Well, in, in that case, the yeah. court didn't rule on the First Amendment issue. Mm -hmm. They ruled, they ruled they, that Haiku has the right to have uh, access to publicly available profiles. Sure, but just for clarity, they ruled on the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. They, yes. The court declined to. Uh, rule on the First Amendment issue there. So it does sort of sound like that you guys are eventually, I mean, 
I would imagine you must be preparing for some cases that will be landmark cases that, that set a precedent in this area. Yeah, I think that it's a, a very You're interesting You're going to have a lot of news. days in court. Um, Are you prepared for that? Sure, yeah. I don't think there'll be that many, but you know. So one of your investors, Peter Thiel, is also a Facebook board member. Mm -hmm. um, was he comfortable with how you were pulling this data from Facebook? We have a lot of investors as part of Clearview, and we're very happy for all, all their support uh, and as we've grown the company. But did he know about the, the, the testing of, of faces from Facebook? Uh, yeah, he's a passive investor, and uh, you'd have to ask him. Okay. Yeah. You think you're going to get pressure from investors eventually to say, I mean, if you look at how technology, any technical tool mm -hmm. that get, is often first developed for government or law enforcement, mm -hmm. often then we'll start seeing being used in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Are you ever going to start selling this to, to private companies outside of banking? No, we have no plans to. We're going to stick to law enforcement and a few banks to help solve crimes. Technology is not an inevitable thing. It's up to us to decide how to use it and what to use it for. So that's something we have no plans to do, and we don't think it's a good idea. Lawmakers are pretty interested since mm -hmm. this story broke in the yeah. New York Times. Um, I believe Senator Ron Wyden has mm -hmm. requested a meeting. Have, mm -hmm. have you spoken to him? Yeah, we've uh, been in contact with their office, and we're really looking forward to engaging with all the people uh, and all the regulators because... So you think this is an area that should be regulated? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it should be banned or a moratorium because it's too useful for law enforcement. It's really, really powerful. But I am very open and happy to start a dialogue on how it's used and guidelines and, um, you know, all the things we've talked about before and audit trails and things like that. So I don't think regulation is a bad thing. And we want to work with the government to create something that is uh, safe and understandable and keeps uh, the whole public at ease. Have you met with any, any legislators yet? Yeah, we've had meetings so far. Have you met yeah. with? Um, a while ago we met with some people and we're going to do more meetings in the future. Yeah. You don't want to name any of them? No, it's between us for now. But we, we take it very seriously and we want to make sure that you know, they understand how it's being used and how it can help their communities stay safe. So just on the, the accuracy mm -hmm. of um, the technology, um, you, know, you guys say it's been, it, that it's been independently vetted? Yes, so we've done tests like Megaface, which is at a University of Washington, which is a really tough test. Can I pick a face out of a million? And we do real tests like this one here, where it's out of billions and people know it works. When, once they see it, once they use it, they can really feel it. What if it identifies the wrong person and that, that you know, it's a long road to a conviction, I know, but if, if it's a, an important piece of evidence mm -hmm. in a case that leads to a wrongful conviction, are you worried about that? Yeah, I, we don't want that to happen at all. And so that's why the way it's currently used in all the law enforcement agencies around the U.S. is to make sure it's just a lead. So if the photo comes there and uh, it's a link to a web page and the investigator can say, look, that looks exactly like the person, but, you know, it says they live in, you know, a different country or something like that. And like I said, we've had no instances of someone being wrongfully arrested or even detained with this tool. We spoke to the New Jersey mm -hmm. Attorney General, and he's really concerned about what you're doing. He's yes. concerned about how you guys are marketing this, how you guys are approaching law enforcement. Mm -hmm. What's your response to him? You know, we've reached out to him through our legal counsel, and we're very excited to have a dialogue with him about how it's being used in New Jersey, how it's keeping families in New Jersey safe, and I think we can work together to, to come to an understanding. So, you know, there's a lot of things I think we can provide the AG of Jersey to, to um You guys were using his face. He, he sent a cease and desist. Yeah, that was on the marketing material. So we don't talk about, you know, cases in specifics anymore. But that's the that's the thing. But I don't think he has anything against the technology. I think he wants to help law enforcement solve crimes. He just needs to know a little more. And we're very excited to, to engage with him and um, show him how it really works. Right now, are you only selling to law enforcement in the U.S.? I'm primarily focused on the U.S. and Canada, yeah. Anything outside of that? That's the primary focus, yeah. So but there are yeah. some... This is, there's been interest from, from other places, but our, we want to make sure that you know, the U.S., Canada uh, stay safe, and that's a great starting point for us. Is there law enforcement, um, intelligence agencies, government agencies mm -hmm. in other countries that maybe the U.S. Uh, or, or U.S. rivals, Russia, mm -hmm. China, Iran, mm -hmm. 
Um, are there agencies in those countries that you would not sell to, or are you happy yeah, to We would never sell to those, yeah. We want to, it would be a really bad thing for America. We want to be a great American company, help the U.S. government, uh, help law enforcement, help the intelligence community as much as we can, and it would be a totally irresponsible thing to do. There's been some research on, on facial recognition technology um, being less good at uh, identifying people of color, mm -hmm. um, women. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that applies to your technology? Have you guys looked into that? Yeah, we looked into that. That's part of why we did the same testing as the ACLU, the same methodology. And, you know, as a person of color myself, it works on my face perfectly well, your producer, uh, and it's something we take seriously. So we've had no racial or gender bias with our algorithm. And, um, and we're very proud of that. And we made sure to train it on all the different uh, ethnic groups to make sure it works. Clearly, as you with the, the photo of me there when I was a teenager, you do have photos of children in this database. So it extends, it, it doesn't discriminate based on age, I guess. Yeah, we're collecting any photo that's out there from the open web. And there are some concerns about, you know, maybe having photos of children. But what we found is it's extremely useful for law enforcement. So sometimes I didn't even understand this new thing called sextortion. So child predator will be extorting your children online, you don't even know about it. So they say, send me a nude photo. Uh, the kid, your, your child might do that. And then they will say, if you don't send me 10 more, I'm gonna tell your parents. When law enforcement catches these uh, bad guys, they have troves and troves of children's faces on the computers and they don't know who the kids are. And one agency in Canada, in one and a half weeks, they could identify eight victims of child abuse with the tool. And that's just an incredible thing. And we're very proud that we can help with those uh, cases. These are, these are kids that wouldn't have been identified. Just to be clear, people can remove photos from your database that they own, but they can't remove every photo of themselves, correct? Yeah, they can, you know, you can uh, opt out according to all the different privacy laws. We are complying with all the different privacy laws that are out there, in the different jurisdictions, etc. If you're, my dad, Mm -hmm. doesn't have a Facebook account. But I've put photos of my dad up online. So mm -hmm. my sisters, my mom, his photo's probably in your database, uh, even though he's f essentially never been online. Is your view that by him consenting to get a photo taken, uh, you know, by me, mm -hmm. uh, that I really, it's, he has inadvertently uh, consented to being in your database? Did you post it publicly? Yes. Yeah. And uh, did you say, "Hey, Dad, I'm going to put this on"? The no, air? probably not. Oh, interesting. So, but you know, so it's that's our view. Then. Yeah. And it was also our view that you know, it's for this use case. You know, um, say not your dad, but someone else was in the background of that photo, and uh, that could le lead to solving a crime. Then it's a good thing. So there's actually no way for any in, anyone in the world to, to really get their face out of your database, right? Look, the, like I said, there's different privacy laws in different regions of the country with certain opt-out things that we comply with. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a process, but um, yeah. Um, what does the next, what's, the, what's next level for Clearview? Next level is doing what we're currently doing, uh, building a better product, serving uh, the law enforcement customers and making sure they're happy. We have a lot of people to keep happy. So you have people in law enforcement, we have our employees we have to keep happy. Uh, we have the regulators and the government, which we're happy to work with, and the, also the general public. So that's why we're here to explain what it's really used for, how helpful it can be to society. And, um, and so just keeping everyone happy. Well, what have you been doing that you get this money from somebody like Peter Thiel and to set up this company? Um, mm -hmm. Where'd you come from? Where'd I come from? Well, I was born in Australia, actually. So um, my dad's from Vietnam, technically the Vietnamese royal family, unfortunately no longer in power. And when he was 18, he got a scholarship to go to Australia. Uh, he ranked really high for mathematics. And he met my mom in Tasmania at the bottom, and that's where I was born. Um, and uh, it was a great place to grow up in Australia. I love it a lot. And I was always into computers. I got a computer when I was young. We got the internet. I was always learning to program, tinker around. And when I was 19, I moved to uh, Silicon Valley. I met uh, a guy named Naval Ravikant, who was an investor. And I worked in tons of different apps and games on the App Store. 
uh, some of the first top iPhone games and Facebook apps. And, uh, and I always loved technology. I eventually moved to New York City, and that's where Clearview was started. Where did you meet Peter Thiel? Uh, I met him through the Silicon Valley community, yeah. And he's obviously interested in, in, in helping law enforcement in this way. Yeah, you know, he has, uh, he loves America, he loves uh, what Palantir does as well, which is help the intelligence community. And we're thrilled to have a lot of different investors from all kinds of stripes. Um, uh, and we really appreciate their help. Are you working on any face recognition technology that could be used in in real time? I, I know in London they've started to do some live facial mm -hmm. rec. Of, is that something that you'd eventually see Clearview getting in the market? of? No, right now we're focused on after-the-fact investigations. So uh, we haven't uh, explored any of the real-time uh, things. What's great about after-the-fact investigations is it really you're not searching everyone 24-7. It's only when a crime has happened that you, you run a search. But would you rule that out in the future? I, I don't comment on uh, product plans for the future. And and we don't have any plans for that. Are you yeah, working on any other products or tools at the moment, or is this your sole focus? This is the sole focus, you know. So, you know, there's a lot to go. This is just the beginning. Uh, there's a lot more information uh, that's out there, and then a lot more crimes to help solve. Is privacy a myth? A myth? Hmm. No, I really think that you know, privacy is real. There's a lot of things that you have in your private text messages or you know, different apps that are separate from what you put out there publicly. So you know, people um, understand what's public and what's private. And so there's a lot of information that you know, we would never search. We don't have any of your private messages or your camera roll. That's not our philosophy. So um, no, I think privacy will still be around. Are uh, you comfortable with being the face of defending the use of facial recognition technology use by law enforcement. Absolutely. I think it's a great thing to do. We're very proud of our work. Why should we trust you? Look, that's why we came forward to the public and worked with the New York Times and are engaging with all the different lawmakers out there and the general public to explain all this stuff and show how it's worked. So in the sunlight where everyone sees our actions, we're going to have to live up to the highest and highest of standards. So we don't want to let you down. We want to make sure that this is a great tool used for law enforcement and it's doing a lot of good. Any kind of abuse, you know, the, the commanding officer can shut off the account and we don't want anything bad to happen. And thank God we haven't had any uh, misidentifications or wrongful arrests. The responsibility to, to ensure that law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, is using it appropriately rests with law enforcement, though, is what you're saying. It does, but we're providing them the tools like an audit trail and all these other tools in law enforcement to make it easier for them to make sure it's being used for the right kind of cases. And, you know, these people in law enforcement, they're wonderful people. Of course, there are some bad apples, but they have a lot of uh, people watching them as well. Mm -hmm.